I'm talking to you. Yes. Not sinners. Right. Christians. Yes. Believers. Amen. I'm talking to you. Yes. Not sinners. Sinners. Those of you that don't know Christ. Haven't accepted Christ. I'm preaching to you. Amen. But to you believers. Those of you that say you know God. Those of you that say you believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. I'm talking to you. Not to sin man, but to you. The word of God says that the Bible is a mystery. Yeah. Hello, church. Yeah. It's a mystery. Yeah. What does a mystery mean? A mystery means there's something hidden yeah. from the rest of the world. Yeah. Meaning that if you are a believer, yeah. if you are a believer, yeah. you understand this word. Hello? Amen. I say, if you are a believer, yeah. if you say you're my brother, yeah. are we brothers in Christ? Yeah. That means that there's one spirit yeah. that speaks to you. Yeah. That one spirit that convicts you. Yeah. If you say that you're my brother, yeah. and notice when Paul was, he started out in verse 9, he said, look, I already wrote a letter to you, so that tells me that there's a letter out there somewhere that is missing. Because he said, I wrote an epistle to you. Now I'm writing to you again. Because we already got this in 1 Corinthians and we got 2 Corinthians, but he said, I wrote to you right here in the first book. But he, and he got word. He got word that there was sin in the church. We ain't talking about out there in the street. We're talking about in the church. Uh oh. Yeah. Ain't talking to sinners. I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to you that say you know God. Yeah, that's what you say. And the last time I checked, he said that he he put us, he knitted us together in the body of Christ because we are believers. And sometimes we have got it, or the enemy has got things so twisted that we end up preaching to folk that are believers and teaching to folk that are lost. Hello, church. You can't teach someone the things of Christ that don't even know them. You preach to the lost one. You preach to them because he said by preaching, I will draw them out of darkness into the marvelous light. So some of you need to receive preaching and accept Jesus Christ so that you can be taught. Amen. Hello, church. Amen. I'm talking to Christians now. But Paul said, I, I, I've heard that, 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 there's a, that there's a son who's having sex with his stepmother in the church. But that ain't the problem. The problem is those who are in the church would let me go and be okay. Hello, church. Hello, brothers. Hello, sisters in Christ. It was the, 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 the problem was that it was okay for them. And it's just like you. If you claim to be a child of God and you got a brother or sister in a known sin and you just let them think it's okay. This is what Paul teaches. Hello? And he said, for such a one, I want you to turn him over to Satan. Hello? How many of y'all need to be turned over to Satan? Hello, church? Uh oh. Are we all brothers and sisters in here because who, who in here saying that they don't know Christ? Who in here saying that he's not their Lord and Savior? Because if you're saying that he is, you must understand what Paul is admonishing and he's, he's coming down on the people in the Corinthian church. Because it ain't no life and matter when somebody is playing with God and on their way to hell. Yeah. It ain't no life and matter. It ain't no plaything. And Paul loved them that much because Paul told them the truth. Amen. See, we got to find folk that love us so much that they are willing to tell us the truth even though it's going to risk our relationship. Yes. 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 Oh, you 
Because I'm talking to I'm talking to a brother now. I ain't talking to you that sin us now. I'm talking to you that are my brothers. Are my sisters in Christ. Because he said, when you know that, then you are to confront that. Amen. That don't mean you bring them out in front of them. That means you go to them. But the problem is when you are so lax that it's okay, it becomes a game. Amen. And he said that cannot stay in the body of Christ. Amen. Hello, church. Amen. Still with me? Amen. Huh? Amen. So that's why I don't want to get into your business. I don't want to know what you're doing. God knows what you're doing. Amen. Why do I need to know what you're doing? And that's why some of your busy bodies, and it's a dangerous thing to be a busy body, because when you know not somebody, you are trying to go talk to them. Hello, sir. No, 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 what we want to do, we want to tell other folk, and then we want to talk about it, but you don't want to go to the person. Hello, sir. Don't be bringing that trash to me. Don't be taking it to someone else. Because what they know, if they are charged with going to you and getting it straightened out. Amen. Instead of going along with it as if it doesn't count. God is saying, I am telling you that those that are not of me are of the devil. Amen. Hello, church. Got too many folk. In the church saying they know God. Saying that you know that you are a child of God. Say that you know you're a believer. And you're doing everything that the world is doing. Hello? And you want the church folk to accept what they know. And Paul is telling them, he says, look, I'm telling you that those, that the ones that is there, I want you to turn them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. For the salvation of the soul. Now, that's not love. I don't know what it is. He could have said, I want to destroy it and go to the lake of fire. But he didn't. He said, I want them to turn over to Satan. And that's exactly what I'm doing to the, my brethren at New Hope. I'm turning you over to Satan. Hello? For the destruction of faith, because you say you believe in God. You say you're my brother. I'm saying I'm your brother. Then I'm turning you over to him so that your flesh can be destroyed for the salvation of your soul. And that's why many of you got problems today is because you are being beat by God because you do believe in him. But you continue to go out in the world and be like them and run the We sing this song and we take communion talking about this power in the blood. Power to do what? Power to do what? Except overcome the things of the flesh that will get you cast into the lake of fire. Hello, church. Amen. He says, I'm turning you over to Satan. See, I don't have to worry about coming up against you. All I need to do, and all you need to do as brethren, is turn your brothers and sisters over to Satan and let him, let the flesh be beat and destroyed because you care about that soul. Because he says here, listen, listen now you, you have to look at it because, and, and think about what he's saying here. He's telling you that if you are his, the word of God speaks to us and says that you, those of us that belong to him, God chastens. Yeah, those that he loves. Hello? Amen. Says that if he loved you, he chastened you. And if you claim to be a child of God and you can live any kind of way and there is nothing happening to you, I'm telling you, you are not saved. You are you on your way to hell and you will be cast in the lake of fire until you wake up and cause it Mark, it says, in, in 11, it says, except you turn and be converted. See, you, listen, you can be a believer today. You can have all that change right now. If you just convert from the darkness to the light by accepting Jesus Christ, not what you've done, but what believe in Him. Amen. Amen.
for yourself, church. You can't get it from someone else. He's telling you. He's laying it out here. What is not going to inherit the kingdom of God? Amen. Do you think that's a joke in the time that we live in right now? When we got our own leaders in, 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 in Washington allowing uh, 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 other gods to speak from our national floor? Do you think God is going to just close his eyes on that while we sit and we run and we play and take God as a joke? Come in the church and you don't even hear what he's saying? You, you, you don't receive what he's trying to get across to you, that he loves you. He don't want you to perish. He wants you to have life. More abundantly. But the signs of the time is happening right before us and we come in and play in church as if it's okay. Amen. You better hear something that changes your life, that your mind is changed to think like him. Amen. We got too many folks that's learning to know the same God, but you're thinking just like the people of the world. But listen, listen, in order for you to be a Christian, hello, Amen. in order for you to be a Christian, you first had to be a sinner. Amen. Hello, church. Amen. I said in order for you to be a Christian, you had to be a sinner first. That way you ought to know the difference when you say you know Jesus Christ. Because he said, for some of you, you were like them. Hello? Amen. That's what he said. You were just like them. If God has changed you and now you say and you you on your way to heaven. He said you used to be like the fornicators. You used to be like the adulterers. You used to be like the covetous. You used to be like the revilers. You used to be like the revelers. This is what he said you used to be like. But some of you got it twisted, and you saying you claim in God, but you still like what you used to be. Yeah. Hello? Play it up. You used to complain. You don't complain anymore, God, because if you look at what we talked about in Sunday school, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What you complaining about? You ain't got enough money, your God got it. You, your, your health ain't right, then your God got healing. Hello? And if he don't hear you, then he's going to give you a new body on the other side. So what are you complaining about? He said, pass your way through the things that he allowed to happen to you because some of those things are for the glory of God. And too many of you trying to find an easy way out. Amen. Are you my brother or not? Hello, if, 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 if we're brothers and sisters in Christ, then we ought to be able to come and talk to one another. Amen. Hello, church. Huh? But he said, Turn them over to Satan. And some of you in the church need to be turned over to Satan. You need to be turned over to Satan. Because you, you can't will nobody to be saved. They either got to make up their mind or not. Hello, church. I'm because my daddy, I want you to understand what my daddy told me in this passage of scripture. Because if you are of God, you got a dad. Hello. He said, what about we can call him as a father? Hello. And, and if, if my daddy tell me not to sit down and eat with you, then it's time for me to examine who you are, who I am, and not sit at the same table. I don't need to sit at the same table. I'm talking to my brother. I ain't talking to sinners. He said if I was talking about sinners, then I just have to take you out of the world. I left you in the world so that you can lift up my name in front of the sinners. So that they can come out of where you were. And be saved. But they can't come out of where you were if you still placating and talking and letting it go as if it doesn't mean anything. Don't be sitting around here knowing something on somebody and then you all it becomes a game to you. Tell them to either get right or get out. That's the choice they make. So this ain't about playing games. This is about you ending up in the lake of fire because he said those that are of these things I just called out when cannot, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And if I make you mad, I, listen, I want your soul saved. I care more about your soul than how your feelings are. Everybody who made 
ain't going to look down on you. They want what you are. Hello, if they can change. Hello, church. Because if they can change, they're going to have some compassion coming. But my daddy told me not to sit down and eat with you. And I wonder why he chose me. He said, I, listen, if you're my brother, and you are guilty of these things, and I know it, I don't need to sit down and eat with you. And he chose eating because eating is a form of fellowship. Amen. And he said, what does fellowship, what, what does light have uh, in common with darkness? Hello, church. I can't eat with you no more. Hello, Amen. But he said, he, he, listen, you know, some of you, and they challenge you, or some of you on your own family. Because yeah. he said, you don't know, forsake your family, you can't be none of his. Yeah. Hello, church. Because yeah. everybody said that they believe in Jesus, don't believe in him. Yeah. Everybody said that they know God, they don't know God. Yeah. Hello, church. Yeah. Now, 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 understand me now. I'm not telling you not to eat with your family. But you, you, you need to understand something. He says, if you're my brother and you continue these things, we can't sit down and eat. But just because you say you're my brother and you live in any kind of way, that tells me you're a sinner. So I can sit down with you because you're a sinner that needs to be saved. Hello, church. So you don't have to rule out your family in that way. They just ain't saved. They said they know God. But they don't know God. So you sit down and eat with them until they start showing some evidence that God has transformed their life. That they no longer think like the world. They no longer want to act like the world. Hello, church. This is what Paul is saying. Because Paul said, if you were a sinner and now you transform, Lord, in verse, in chapter 6 and verse 11, now he says, you are washed. So Lord have mercy. Huh? I'm washed in the blood. I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. Not by what I do, not by me stopping doing sin, but by the precious blood of Christ. I am washed in the blood. Meaning that I'm back bound by the sin. The penalty of it. Hello, church. Somebody didn't understand what being washed me. You ever went into the shower and you wash the body, you got you come out, you still dirty? Get back in there! What happened was you got in there and you only ran water. You didn't put no soap on you, put no soap on you. Think you're gonna understand the word of God just by going to church. Gonna understand the word of God by wishful thinking. You're only going to understand this word by God himself revealing himself to you. He said the Father knows the Son, the Son knows the Father, and the Son revealed to those who are his. Amen. Amen. Telling me you don't understand that the word of God said that you can't be in Christ and in the world too. You don't understand that? Something's wrong with you. The Lord church, he said I give you power. And if I wash you clean, then you need to walk like you've been washed. Hello, church. Amen. Lord have mercy. Not only do he wash you, but he tells me here that he sanctifies you. Somebody tell huh? me. He cleans you up, church. He cleans your mind. He cleans your behavior. He cleans you out of what you want to do, and now God's will has become your will. You can no longer tell God what you're going to do. God tells you what he wants you to do. But you think you got authority over your own body, over your own things that you do. No, not if you belong to him, church. Amen. Hello, I'm just telling you what Paul was saying. And he loved the church. I love New Hope. I love everybody in New Hope. But I got to tell you the truth. That if you my brother, then you need to understand you can't have no sin that you're not willing to confess and get rid of it. Hello, church. Because you need to be sanctified in order for you to be revealed what the Word of God is saying. Amen. Running around here telling everybody your opinion. I don't care if that's not your opinion. 
Everybody in here got one. And without Christ, every one of you wrong. Hello, church. Uh, it doesn't matter, matter what the world says. What matters is what God says. And he said, I washed you clean. Huh? I washed that laziness off of you. I washed that desire not to read the word of God. I washed that away from you not to want to fellowship and be around other brethren. I washed that off of you. And then I sanctified you that when you open my book, you understand I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to the world. Sinners are lost and they're on their way to hell. And if you have been converted, you're no longer a sinner. You may sin, but you ain't no sinner. Not according to God's word, because he says that Jesus Christ became your righteousness. So you weren't right here trying to be righteous. Trying to be politically correct. I hear a lot of them talking about that you want, they want to do things decent and in order. Don't have a clue what all the hard pieces is. Amen. Let me tell you something. If you read that same text, it talks about the gifts that God gave out and distributed. They ought to be operated in order. And not for your self-satisfaction and glorification. Hello, church. Because the spirit that comes into you makes you at liberty to receive what God has to say to you. And if anybody want to interrupt that, you need to tell them where they need to go. Because what you say is eternity apart from God. And what you got to say ain't that important to me. Hello, church. Hello, lions. Christians, I'm talking to you. And if you get mad, so be it. Hello. Because I'd rather you get mad at me and go to hell than, than not be mad and go to hell. Amen. Hello, church. Amen. Because you claim to be my brother. You claim to be my sister. In Christ. Receiving the same thing. Do he give some women and others not? Do he pay to somebody over that I love him? No, he don't. Church, understand. If you are a child of God, you got the power of God operating through you. Because he's washed you. And he sanctified you. I say he washed and sanctified you. Amen. Hello. Hello. Now don't you get too high up on that. Because when he sanctified you, now you're free to operate as a child of God. Hello. How you can sing and dance and preach and teach and do all the things, the ministries of God, in order to glorify him, to, to bring him glory. But guess what? Your works don't get you in. Amen. You do all the things you want to do, but if you're not justified, come on. Hello, somebody got problems? Come on, teach. Hello? Some of you started adapting and adjusting your life to uh, 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 things of God. But some way you miss being justified. Because oh. justification can only come through Jesus Christ. Amen. There ain't no righteousness you've got as according to what the word of God said. Romans 3.10 There's none righteous, no, not one. Second right. Corinthians 5.21 says that he became sin for you. Hello, church. He took your sin upon himself to present you to his father who will only accept the son. He's not accepting you. That's the reason why you must understand if you belong to God, the power of God allows you to overcome the things that you keep making excuses to live by.
Notice if we start the reading, you'll find them start dropping off. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. Hello? Because this is about you knowing God. Yes, that's right. And you can prepare when the storms of life, when the trials of life, when the attacks from the prince of this world come you, you can stand on what you believe God has revealed to you. Therefore, as we said last week, listen, I'm not getting in no long debate with some of y'all, especially y'all that don't even read the word. But the conclusion is either you got to fear God and keep his command. That's it. And it's a shame some of you don't have no fear of God whatsoever. Because he says, I will justify you if you'll just believe in my son. That's what God said. I'll justify you. And there's nothing that can stop my power from transforming the way you think. Paul said, don't even eat with them. Don't even eat with them to claim to be my brother. Eat with them. Turn them over. To say, he said, some of you were just like them. You were. Do you understand the tense of that? Because you got folk running in the church and saying, well, you did it, you did it. Did it. Are you listening to what you're saying? I did it. I'm not doing it. from the power 
the church. Amen. Because I'm talking to my brothers. I'm talking to my brothers. And you need to understand. God did not free you. God did not clean you. God did not justify you in through his son for you to act like you got to know how. Amen. And he's saying, stop complaining. Stop complaining. Because you can't change nothing that this book says is going to happen before I come. He said, I come to divide the right from the wrong. Hello, church. Amen. Amen. So be careful about what you know. And understand the word of God is for Christians. Those of you that can't understand, you're sinners. You're sinners. And if God comes to you, you must hell wide open. Because you don't understand something simple as he sets you apart. You don't understand something simple as that. And claim to be my brother. Hello? Amen. That's just like me. Listen, I can't preach the word of God and I don't read it, study it, and allow him to speak through me. I can't do that. Amen. Some of you are trying to understand the word of God. That's just like going to a foreign country. Don't even know the language. Hello, church. Amen. The table. I prepared the table for you. And you can sit back and keep pretending like you're a brother if you want to. But he says everything of every one of them. Because some of you were idolaters. Amen. Some of you were fornicators. Amen. And adulterers. And extortioners. You ain't got no head over the head. Now you go somewhere else. You can placate that nonsense. Right here, I know what you are. Amen. Hello. Because I've been there. Hello, church. You were you were there. And thank God. Be glory to God. He cleaned you up. You don't have to be concerned about that anymore. Because you are free. Amen. Hello, church. Christians are talking to you. Not talking to you, sin. We love you. We love you. And we want to be around you to proclaim the word of God. We love you. But he's saying, you want to be inheriting the kingdom of God and you need to take that serious. And if you're here today, you need to stop rationalizing and adjusting whether you're going to make a choice to serve the Lord or not. You know right now whether you belong to Him or not. You know right now. And if you don't, you need to come out of God. Because He said it's not about you. He says, you, I washed you, I sanctified you, and I justified you. The Romans 5 1 said that you are justified. Lord, when you're justified, then you have peace with God. And too many today don't have peace with God because you're making too many excuses for why you can't yield to Him. And I'm, and I'm telling you, all of you, I'm turning you over to Satan that is my brother and got no power. Turning you over. And you, you should not What God is saying to you. Amen. It ain't for someone else. It's for you today. And he said, I'll wash you, I'll sanctify you, and I'll justify you before my father. If you just say, Yes, Lord, here I am. I don't want to wonder what I'm saying. I don't want to guess what I'm saying. I don't want to be sitting here thinking, Well, I got time. Because your time is running out. Amen. Look at the world of heaven. Look at the earthquakes. Look at them. I put it there. I'm, I'm allowing you to see them in silence. Look at the love between 
for. I just seen where a, a, a man went in the church and killed, I think, his wife and the preacher. Wasn't that, wasn't that, huh? that just the other day? They road rage. Somebody blew at somebody and the person shot three or four times in the car. Somebody come to church, man. Let us stand. I'm talking to you, brothers. 